Hi XR developers and welcome to a new MR motif, which is our way of introducing development best practices to you as a recipe on how to create outstanding mixed reality experiences. In this MR motif, we introduce to you the concept of shared activities in mixed reality. Social experiences can promote realistic, intuitive interactions when individuals believe they are genuinely sharing the same experience. We will learn how to create truly shared experiences using and extending the multiplayer building blocks. You have reported to us that it can be difficult to build on top of the multiplayer building blocks and therefore we will explain the most important components and how to make sure that you pass the entitlement check every time for a seamless multiplayer experience. In the end, we will create our custom logic specifically designed for mixed reality to create a convincing chess experience and even invite our friends to it. As always, you can find the assets for this project on our GitHub page. The link is in the description. And now, let's get started with shared experiences in mixed reality. The multiplayer building blocks support Unity's netcode for game objects and Photon Fusion 2 at parity, with the exception of the player voice chat building block, which is only available for Photon Fusion. This is the main reason why this MR motif will be based on Photon Fusion. In order to use the network meta avatars in Photon Fusion 2, we need to install a few additional packages into our project. If you already cloned the MR Motifs project or start from a fresh project, you want to make sure the necessary packages are installed. We need the core and interaction SDK for basic functionality. Then, especially for this MR Motif, we need the meta avatars and avatar sample asset SDKs, as well as the meta platform SDK. The platform SDK is required by the player name tag and networked avatar blocks. It is also required to retrieve data such as the player's avatar and name, as well as check the entitlement and to create group presence to later invite our friends. We highly recommend you to use the Meta XR simulator as well, since it will make it much easier to test your multiplayer experience later on. You can install all Meta XR SDKs via the Unity Package Manager or through the Unity Asset Store. All information can be found on the GitHub README, on our blog post or in the description below. Last but not least, we need our specific multiplayer packages. And as mentioned before, this will be Photon Fusion for this tutorial. We can directly download the Fusion 2 package from the Unity Asset Store. Head over to the link in the description and add the asset to your project. We can then simply import the whole package. Make sure to create an app ID on your Photon dashboard and fill it in the real-time settings. There will be a pop-up window at the beginning or yet another window when we try to import any multiplayer building blocks. Next, for the voice chat to work, we need the Photon Voice 2 SDK, which can also be found on the Asset Store. Here, however, we should not just install the whole package, but unselect a few specific folders we don't want in our project. We can uncheck Photon slash Photon Chat, as well as Photon slash Photon Unity Networking, or PUN, as well as Photon slash Photon Voice slash Code slash PUN, and also unselect all the Photon Voice demos except for the Photon Fusion one. Also, here we make sure to create a voice app ID in our Photon dashboard and fill it into the Photon real-time settings under Tools, then Fusion, and then Real-time settings. After installing all the necessary packages, we are finally ready to set up our multiplayer scene. For this, we are going to use several building blocks. We are of course going to start with the camera rig building block. Feel free to add any additional building blocks such as grab or ray interactions for hand and controller tracking. You can also simply use the OVR camera rig prefab from the MR Motifs shared folder. We then need a pass-through building block. After that, we can directly go ahead and import the networked avatar building block. Simply choose which networking framework you want to go with. Since we already installed Fusion, we can continue. This will automatically import the network manager, platform init, and auto matchmaking building blocks. To make this sample more complete, we will also import the player name tag and player voice chat building blocks. Congratulations, you just created your first multiplayer experience within minutes. Before we can go ahead and create a truly shared activity in mixed reality, let's understand what the most important components do in more detail. The overall setup here has been made fairly simple. The main components on the network manager are the Fusion Network Runner, the network events, as well as the Fusion Building Block events. The network runner is Fusion's central Unity component, which represents a single network client. So every client in your scene will have their own network runner. All messaging, matchmaking, connecting, spawning and more goes through this component. In networking, timing is very important. For this we have the network events. The network events inform us about important events 
during our multiplayer session and allow us to execute logic accordingly. For example, when the client has connected to the server, when a player has left, or when the network runner was shut down because of a loss of connection. With our multiplayer building blocks, we have the option to, instead of using network events, directly use the Fusion BB events class, which wraps the iNetwork runner callbacks from Photon Fusion and exposes them as static events, allowing multiple classes to subscribe and respond to them without having to directly implement the iNetwork runner callbacks interface each time in each of our classes. The next block contains the platform init class, which, as the name suggests, initializes the meta platform. It checks if the user is entitled to use the app and retrieves their access token and user information. It updates the initialization status and provides this information through a callback function. We will go over how to make sure that entitlement check is successful in a minute. Up next is the auto matchmaking block, which simply creates a multiplayer session for us when loading the scene. This makes it easier to handle scene management since we don't have to create a fusion session and choose the game mode ourselves. However, keep in mind that when you would like to leave the scene, you will have to call the shutdown method from the network runner before you load any new scene. Before we look at the networked avatars, let's finish our basic multiplayer setup. We are still missing one fundamental point, which is the entitlement check. How do we make sure that our entitlement check works correctly every time? Well, there are a couple of steps we have to take. We have to create a developer account on the MetaQuest dashboard and either create or join an organization. Also, we have to create or join an app. We have to either be invited to the release channel, or if the app is public, we have to have bought the app or be part of the organization. Now to make it work in Unity, we have to retrieve the app ID by navigating to development and the API section. Find the ID under app ID used to initialize the platform SDK. Add this app ID to your Unity project through the Unity editor under meta, platform, and then edit settings under application ID. You need to make sure to complete your data use checkup for your app which can be found under requirements and then data use checkup. For using the meta avatars, we need to fill the usage for user ID, user profile and avatars. Make sure that for all of them, you select use avatars under usage and write an arbitrary description such as using meta avatars in multiplayer experience under description. If everything was filled out correctly, the request should be accepted in a few minutes in most cases. We would like to use other platform features such as the friends invite feature in this MR motif so we will need to fill out additional data use checkups, such as deep linking, friends, and invites. To invite our friends, we also need to create destinations where we want to invite them to. We can create one or more destinations for our app under engagement and then destinations. Fill out name, description, API name, and deep link message. You will later need at least the API name in order to invite friends to your experience. Now, let's get back to the app ID. In the Unity editor under the platform settings, there is the option to not only fill in a Quest ID, but also a Rift ID. If you are developing only for Quest Standalone, you can fill the same ID into both fields. We can also check the Use Standalone Platform checkbox. We can then go back to our dashboard. Under Development, Test Users, we would like to create a new test user. This helps us test our app through the editor and simulate a new account besides our own, which can be helpful for debugging later. Make sure to at least fill in the prefixes and password. Remember or note down the password since you will not be able to retrieve it later. Also a little detail here. If you have release channels like alpha or beta, make sure to also invite this test user to the channel. Now, in your Unity editor under meta, platform and then edit settings, under Unity editor settings, click on the checkbox for use standalone platform and fill in your test user credentials and then click on login. You should now be logged in to your test user on your editor. Last but not least, we need to upload an APK of our experience to a release channel of our app, for example, Alpha. We can use the MetaQuest Developer Hub for this. Under App Distribution, we select our organization and the application we want to upload our APK to. Make sure everyone testing your app is part of your organization or invited to your private release channels, such as Alpha or Beta, by email. Just go to the release channel and then click on Users, where you can find and add users and send invites. If you are still having issues passing entitlement, seeing the avatars, or uploading your APK to the store, check the README page of the MR Motif GitHub repository, where we put together a short troubleshooting guide, which should resolve the most common issues. Now, let's move on to multiplayer testing. Testing your experience is a crucial part of your development, especially when dealing with multiplayer. We not only need to make sure that our app is working, 
but also that it runs on multiple clients at the same time. The Meta XR simulator, together with a third-party asset called Parallelsync, make it very easy and quick to simulate multiple players to test your application before going back and forth with your headset. You can find Parallelsync on GitHub and either install it via Unity Package Manager or with a Unity Package file, which you can find and download from the releases page. After you install the package in your project, you will see a new menu item at the top called Parallelsync. If we go to the Clone Manager, we can easily create several clones of our project by clicking on the Add New Clone button. Once the clones are ready, we have the option to open them in an additional editor window. Unity knows these editors are clones and will not allow us to make any changes to these cloned projects. Only if we modify the original project, we will apply those changes to all other clones as soon as we go back to the editor. Let's now open the chess sample scene and start the XR simulator for all clients. You can see that we can now move all the clients individually and their movement is being reflected on the other clients' machines. We can move chess pieces and move around our avatar and every client stays in sync. On top of this, we can even join with a client from our MetaQuest headset and interact with our XR simulator clients. Amazing! Now let's look at how the network avatars work and how this chess sample was created. To manipulate the movement of a meta avatar, we need to familiarize ourselves first with what the network avatar building block is doing. The avatar spawner fusion class spawns the fusion avatar prefab into our multiplayer scene. At the heart of the avatar movement is the avatar entity. The avatar entity class handles the loading, configuration and synchronization of meta avatars by streaming avatar state data such as position, rotation and customization details. Avatar Behavior Fusion class integrates this system with Photon Fusion, networking the avatar state across clients and ensuring that each client has updated information about remote avatars, meaning the other clients. Together, they allow avatars to be dynamically loaded and synchronized in real time with smooth transitions and animations while the Fusion implementation handles the transmission. Now, why is this important? Well, in VR, Everyone shares the same virtual spaces and objects, and moving an object or anchor like a chessboard or movie panel affects all users equally, which is the expected use case for multiplayer frameworks. Now, in mixed reality, however, each user wants to place their own local board or screen in their individual space, as moving it for everyone else may look correct for client A, but most likely causes a misalignment in client B and C's room. This poses a challenge not present in traditional VR before. A solution to this problem is to manipulate the remote avatar's position and rotation instead of the chess boards, so that each player positions the board in the most convenient place for them, while still keeping other players in their accurate relative position and rotation to the board. Simplest solution would be to offset the OVR camera rig, since the avatar follows the camera and the camera is a child of the camera rig. The issue, however, is that we cannot really access the camera rig of a remote avatar nor do we ever move the OVR rig ourselves in a mixed reality experience, because we are not using locomotion like teleportation as we do in VR. Therefore, we can actually just directly offset the avatar behavior fusion component itself. Think of it as the remote version of another player's OVR camera rig. The basic idea is to keep a network list of all avatar positions and rotations that are managed by the state authority. Every client can then always read from this list and therefore know where every other avatar is positioned relative to their own chessboard at all times. This means that everyone has the full freedom over where they want to place their chessboard while still getting accurate information about where each avatar is supposed to be around the board, creating a truly shared activity. Now, this tutorial is already very extensive and the MR motif provides you with several custom classes that demonstrate how you could create a shared experience. I encourage you to take a look at the GitHub repo for this. It should give you a good idea on how to manage several avatars by their IDs and also how to send data over the network using Photon Fusion. The scripts folder is subdivided into five folders, each hosting concise and easy to follow classes. In the avatars folder, the avatar movement handler motif class is the core class and manages the synchronization of network avatar positions and rotations. It childs the remote avatars to the object of interest, such as the chessboard, to make them move with the object. The class ensures that both local and remote avatars are correctly positioned relative to the central object of interest, such as the chessboard, by updating their transforms across clients whenever the object is moved or interacted with, maintaining consistency in the multiplayer environment. For this, we use an RPC or remote procedural call, as you can see here with the send position and rotation RPC method, 
which is used to send position and rotation data from every client to the state authority, which maintains a list of all clients and their position and rotations. So everyone can read from this list and update all other remote avatars. In the avatar movement handler motif class, after spawning and positioning the avatar in their spawn location, we invoke a new event called onRemoteAvatarAdded. In the classes called AvatarNameTagHandlerMotif and AvatarSpeakerHandlerMotif, we simply listen to this event to then child the correct name tag and speaker to the avatar with the corresponding ID as soon as they are spawned. Spawning is another core concept of this MR motif. The spawn point motif class acts as a marker for spawn locations within the scene. The developer can create more of these points to set up additional spawn locations. The spawn manager motif class collects these spawn points, handles the queue of players to be spawned, and assigns available spawn locations to players. We need this queue to make sure that avatars are not spawning at the exact same time to prevent them to be spawned at the exact same location. The avatar spawner handler motif class listens for events when avatars are spawned and interacts with the spawn manager motif class to enqueue players and ensure that they are placed at the correct spawn location, coordinating the overall spawning process seamlessly. Last but not least, we created two classes that are responsible for inviting friends to our multiplayer experience. The group presence and invite handler motif class manages group presence and friend invitations using the Oculus Platform SDK. We want to set the destination API name, lobby session ID, and match session ID in our inspector. Make sure the destination API name matches the name you set up on your destination in the developer dashboard. When we are connected to the server, we want to set up the group presence by filling the options with our variables that we filled in our inspector, and most importantly, we need to set our session as joinable, allowing others to join through invites. This happens automatically through our script as soon as a player joins the scene. From that point on, the scene is joinable, and then we can invite our friends. Optionally, this class allows us to launch an invite panel as well. However, this is not really necessary, since we can also just send invites from the Horizon menu panel once our session is set to joinable. Now, in order to friends to now join the session, the Invitation Acceptance Handler Motif class needs to be present in the very first scene at the start of the application. This manages deep link invitations using the Meta Platform SDK. We can look at our entrance scene, which is the MR Motif home scene. Here in the inspector, we can fill in our dictionary with the API name of the destination and the scene that should be loaded. If someone has been invited to this destination, we need an entitlement check class in our scene as well, which comes from the multiplayer building blocks package. As we can see in the invitation acceptance handler motif class, we can listen to the user pass entitlement check event. So if the entitlement check passes and the user has joined the scene through a deep link, we go over our list of destinations and look for the right one. So we can immediately launch our friend into the right scene. All right, this was a lot of material at once, but I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. Hopefully, I was able to show you how to not only create seamless multiplayer experiences using the multiplayer building blocks, but also how the meta platform works and how to easily add cool features such as friend invites to your game. You can find this project with all source code on GitHub. The link is in the description. Also, don't forget to check out our blog post about shared activities in mixed reality to get even more tips. Did you like this motif? Would you like to learn more tips and tricks to bring your mixed reality experience to the next level? Let us know in the comments what other topics you want us to cover in the future and stay tuned for new MR motifs.